What's going on guys? This is Chandler Smith and I am so pumped about this video because I just got another apartment complex under contract. And so in this video, I'm gonna give you all the details that I can on this complex and I'm gonna break down everything that I have to do at this point now that it's under contract to get through due diligence and get to closing. So with all of that being said, Let's jump into it. All right, guys, if you're new to the channel, my name's Chandler Smith, and I've been investing in real estate for the last seven years. I currently own 99 units of rental real estate, and so I am so excited because this complex will blow me past that 100 unit mark. The only thing I need to do is make sure I knock on wood because it's just under contract. We still have all of due diligence and finding our way to the closing table. So we're probably a good 45 to 60 days out before being able to actually close on this complex. And there's a lot that I have to do and a lot that could potentially happen to throw this deal off kilter. However, right now, it looks like a beautiful deal. And so in this video, I'm gonna kinda give you all of the information that I can on this actual deal and break down everything that I've got to do over the next 15 to 30 days to make sure that we do due diligence properly, that we understand the numbers, that we dive into the rents, that we dive into the actual property. And in this video and future videos I do on this complex, I'm going to try and give more information than I ever have on any of my other purchases because I've come to find that you guys absolutely love a transparent look at the entire process of purchasing an apartment complex. So I'm gonna try and give you the step-by-step -step process. However, just understand there's a ton of information that I can't be super transparent with until we get it closed. And the reason for this is I don't want anyone else swooping in or trying to offer more. I also don't want the seller getting uncomfortable with me sharing stuff that I shouldn't be sharing until we get it closed. So just know I will share everything with you and I'm gonna share a ton in this video, but any of the details that I don't share, it's just because I want to wait until this property is closed because I don't want to do anything to ruin the deal. Now, you also need to understand that the seller has been absolutely incredible. They really are awesome. They've been super easy to work with. And so I'm excited to go through this process because I do think everything's going to go well. However, I'm gonna knock on wood again because you never know what can happen. You never know what you can find or what things might come into play. And so if you have any questions, make sure you let me know in the comments because I want to answer all of them. I wanna give you guys every piece of information I can with this entire process so that you can go into whatever purchase you're going into next with a ton of confidence because that is the goal of this YouTube channel is to help you to build a huge passive income through investing in real estate. All that I ask of you is that you smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the little bell so that you can catch all of the details in the future videos that I'm gonna post on this property. So to start off, I wanna kinda of give you the story of how this property came to be, how I found it, and all of the steps I now need to take to get through this process. So just so you understand, this property has been in play for a long time. As a matter of fact, I've even mentioned it in other videos and I've mentioned the unit amount in other videos, but I don't wanna to share too much information right now just because I do wanna keep it on the DL and if you look through my other videos, you're not gonna be able to figure out what I'm talking about, but I did hint at it months ago. This property has been in play for a long time. I've kept in good communication with the realtor for months now on it, and he's done a great job following up with the seller. And the seller kind of just needed to figure out, first of all, if they wanted to sell the property, what they wanted to sell it for, and kind of when they wanted to go through that entire process. Now, there's so much more that goes into this interaction because not only do we have to get the seller to the point where they're comfortable to sell, but we've also got to make sure that we get them to the right price. And what I mean by this is the seller has to be comfortable. They have to make sure that they feel like they're selling it for what it's worth. But then me as the buyer, I've got to make sure that I'm comfortable purchasing the property at a price that I feel comfortable with and that meets my criteria. What you can have happen is the seller will hold super hard and say, well, this is what I think it's worth. And the buyer will be like, well, hey, here's the deal. It's not worth me buying because it doesn't meet my criteria. And this is what makes deal flow so complicated. Now, it's hard enough to find a bigger property. Like for me, it's very difficult to find a property with a lot of units that is 
properties for sale because it's in a very competitive market right now. And so even once you find the property, then it's even more complicated because you've got to make sure you find a number that works for both the buyer and the seller. Now, as a seller, you always want top dollar. You want to get as much as you can out of the property. And as a buyer, I want to make sure that it meets my criteria. And what you'll see is a lot of times you can see sellers mess up and sell it for less than they should, or you can see buyers mess up and pay more than they should. And so finding a win-win where everybody's happy is very complicated. And as a buyer, things can get very complicated because if you find this property and it's got the units that you want, it's in a location you want, it meets all of the criteria, but then you get to the purchase price and you're like, oh, maybe I can bend on my criteria because I don't know if I'm gonna find something like this again. That's where you can find yourself in trouble. And it's like I say, you've gotta know your numbers and you've got to not bend. And so it's very stressful getting to a point where you find the purchase price where one, you don't lose the deal, but two, you don't buy the deal where your numbers don't work with what your criteria is. And so on this property, we definitely had some back and forth and I am pushed to the absolute brink on this property. As a matter of fact, I believe I will get a 10% cash on cash return. And I believe that potentially with rent raises, I could get up to a 12, which I would be pumped on. But that 10 to 12 is iffy at best, all right? I know my market so well, and I know that getting that 12% cash on cash return would be getting the very top of the market, which I do think is possible with this property. But at the same time, this is a property where I had to say, this is my bottom line. Like I cannot do any more. And so if I find things in due diligence that break the deal for me, that I need to go back to the seller and say, look, you've got to pay for this because I can't afford to do it. Like it doesn't make sense financially for me to get in any deeper to this property than I am because I'll drop below what my criteria needs to be. And that's where this deal is kind of iffy because right now the numbers are where I need them to be. But if we find other things in due diligence, which I'm sure we will, I'm gonna need to make sure that the seller is willing to bend on that. So again, the seller has been awesome and I don't wanna share too much information. I'm hoping everything will go smoothly in due diligence, but there's a lot that can come into play that could potentially throw the deal off. So again, I'm hoping everything goes smoothly. So you find the deal, you get the deal under contract. And with this particular deal, I have been around the property. I've seen pictures of the inside, but I haven't gotten to walk through any of the units. Now, with that being said, I have a very good idea of square footage, of quality, of all of that with pictures, but there's a lot that can happen in due diligence. So once I've got the property under contract, which I do right now, I've got it at a price that I am happy with, now we're going to start due diligence. And what that's going to mean is I'm going to get an inspector in there to go through all the units, make sure things are clean. I'm gonna to get to go through all of the leases. I'm gonna go through the profit and loss statements. I'm gonna go through the taxes. I'm gonna go through everything to make sure there aren't any numbers that I potentially missed when I got the property under contract and that there aren't any major issues that we run into that need to be fixed. Because here's the deal with this property. It is a value add property. However, the seller knows that just like I know that. And so a lot of the value with this property is based on a couple of the units that have already been raised to market value. So about half the units are at market value. The other half are two to $300 below market value. And so the seller knows, hey, this is the potential. It's been mismanaged, but now I'm managing it properly. I'm getting the rents raised. And so I should be able to sell it at this, but I'm like, well, here's the deal. These haven't been raised. And so there's probably some work that needs to happen in these units, not only in either raising the rent with the tenants or getting the tenants out and getting new tenants in, but there's a good chance there are renovations or other things that are going to cost money that need to happen to get it to market value on all of the units. And so it's this detail that makes it a little tricky. Now this detail helps me get a little bit better deal but also it helps give the seller a lot more leverage to say, look, these units are already where they're at. And so these units should be able to get raised. And that's why it was really hard for us to get to a purchase price that I was happy with and that they were happy with. Now we're there, 
But now there's a lot of what ifs on if I can go in and just raise rents or if there are renovations that need to happen. And so I'm gonna walk you through that entire inspection, due diligence, all of that in the future videos. And we are going to hope <laughs> that everything comes out clean and that if we do find issues, that the seller is willing to bend a little bit more to get those fixed. Or best case scenario is I don't have to get any more out of the seller because all the units are great. They've just been mismanaged and I just need to go in and raise rents. And there's never gonna be a perfect situation, but even with a couple little renovations, I think I could live with that. And from what I've heard, I think the seller understands that there might need to be a little bit of leeway, but we're going to see. So I find the deal, I get it under contract, I do due diligence, and then I've got an opportunity to go back and say, these are the issues that need fixed. And the seller can either say, I'll pay for all of it, I'll pay for part of it, or I'm not paying for any of it. And then that leaves me in a situation where I've got to say, okay, do the numbers work? Can I make this work? or do I need to bail? Now, while all of this due diligence is going on, on top of that, I need to make sure that I'm locking in financing and that I'm getting the bank that I use or the brokerage or whoever it is moving so that financing is ready to close within the time period that I said. So it's really tricky because you're going through due diligence, you're looking over the numbers, you're looking over rents, you're doing all of that with the inspection, waiting for the inspection to happen, going through it, and then renegotiating on things if there are issues, and you're doing that on a property that it only has half of the rents where they should be and the other half that aren't. And so there's so much up in the air on top of that. I'm trying to find the place with the best rates, the best terms. I'm trying to negotiate. I'm trying to get them competing. And I'm doing all of this work all while I don't even know where the for sure purchase price is going to end up. I'm hoping it'll end up where it's at because there aren't any issues. But then if there are issues, I'm gonna have to take that into consideration and try and tweak that to make the numbers work. And all of that comes into play into getting approved for your financing. And so you're in this weird situation where everything's happening at once. There are a ton of negotiations going on and you're trying to make sure that you do everything properly so you don't burn yourself and end up in a deal where you're not getting the cash flow that you need to make sure that you're protected and in an awesome place. So there is so much that goes into it. But once you've got financing locked up, once you've got due diligence done, then you've got to make sure that all of the paperwork is done properly, that all of the terms and rates and purchase price and the rents are divided properly, um, depending on the date that it's purchased and that you get all of the deposits and that everything is perfect before you go and sign on the dotted line and hand over a fat check and get ownership of this apartment complex. So that is the entire process and you kind of understand my situation because this property is one of those where there are still so many things up in the air, but it's the number of units that I wanted to buy, it's in the price range that I wanted, and it's got a little bit of value add opportunity that I think can help me get the numbers right where I want them, but there is so much up in the air and I'm gonna walk you guys through the entire process and in my future videos, I'm going to break everything down as I go through this process. And again, if you've got any questions on it as we go through, let me know in the comments. But all I have to say is right now, I am pumped because it's under contract. We're starting the process and let's hope that everything goes smoothly. And if it does or if it doesn't, you guys are gonna get to see the entire journey. And again, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel so you can catch all of my videos where my goal is to help you to build a huge passive income. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day.